The 88th Texas Legislature is in the midst of its third called session, with one of the issues on the governor's call being border security, a top priority for Texans. The extraordinary nature of special sessions can make it really hard to keep up, but we want to make sure that you stay informed about the policies and policymakers that are working to keep our country safe. And that's why we ask legislators to come to TBPF to talk about some of the bills that are making their way through the Capitol. This is the layout. I'm Melissa Ford, Policy Director for the Secure and Sovereign Frontier Campaign here at TPPF. And today I'm excited to be joined by Representative David Spiller from House District 68. Representative Spiller, welcome to The Layout. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. Thank you. So today we're discussing House Bill 4, a critical bill for the defense of Texas. Our southern border and by extension our state are facing several major challenges right now due to the federal government failing to do their job at the border. Um, we have drug and human smuggling and trafficking all undertaken by the Mexican drug cartels. And we have a lot of illegal immigration as well. Um, the numbers for fiscal year 2023 were just released uh, by CBP and nearly 2.5 million were encountered at the U.S.-Mexico border. So Representative Spiller, your bill is an effort to find state solutions to rein in some of the lawlessness uh, created by the federal government at our southern border. So can you explain to us a little bit of what HB4 does? Sure. Um, it does several things and has several components. First, it creates a state criminal offense for illegal entry into our state. If you uh, or an alien, as that term is defined uh, under federal law, and you come across our border at some place other than a, a legal point of entry, uh, port of entry, then uh, that, that, is, that is a criminal offense under federal law. That creates a, a state criminal offense for illegal entry. And so uh, it's a class B misdemeanor. Uh, there are several defenses uh, under the under the bill that can be raised, but uh, most importantly, uh, it gives law enforcement a provision in there to say, in lieu of arresting someone for right. that offense, they can detain them and take them to a port of entry with their identifying information and order them to return back to the country from which they came. Uh, that and and so if they comply with that, then fine. If they don't, then that is uh, a violation of, of a refusal to right. comply and it's punishable by a secondary felony two to 20 years. It also has a provision in there about illegal re-entry. If you've, if you've mm -hmm. been back and forth and you come back in, the illegal re-entry re likewise has the same in lieu of uh, right. provision for law enforcement, but also provides that uh, for enhanced punishment for other other crimes, other felonies, uh, things dealing with uh, where they're here improperly. And so it deals with right. that. Likewise, there's a, there's a provision in the Civil Practice and Remedies Code that amends it where it says these law enforcement officers that act <clears throat> uh, properly under, the, under these rules, that if they are sued uh, civilly uh, as a cause of action, then, right. then it provides for indemnification to them by either the local law enforcement agency uh, or by the state unless they act in bad faith or with conscious in, indifference. So uh, the bill covers several different aspects. Yeah, yeah, it sounds very comprehensive. So you and I, we both know, you, you know, we've heard for a long time that border security is the number one issue for all Texans, not just Republicans, not just conservatives, but all Texans. So I wanted to ask you, what made you decide to take the lead on such a big issue? Well, my district, I represent House District 68. That's 12 rural counties, mm -hmm. actually spans uh from the northern border along the Red River uh, of Texas, uh, Cook, uh, Montague, Jack, where I live, right. uh, Young, Throckmorton, Shackelford, Eastland, Brown, Comanche, Mills, San Saba, and Lampasas. So my district uh, snakes all the way down to just north of Austin. But that's still, border security is still the number one issue in my district and has been because 
uh, border security or lack thereof affects us in rural Texas. It affects our rural schools. It affects our rural hospitals. It affects uh, our criminal justice processes. And so it affects us just like it affects everyone else. And so that's been a huge issue. The number one issue, I've tried to educate myself on that uh, in many respects. And actually, this past session carried the bill, the interstate compact bill, yeah. uh, and that was a Republican Party Texas priority. That was my bill, worked with Senator Tam Parker. We got that done. I also, for the last couple years, have carried in this last session what would be known as House Bill 65, uh, which was an enhanced punishment uh, thing, trying to accomplish some of the thing, same things that we're, we've got here. And so I've been, um, I've, I've tried to do as much as I can to help secure our border and uh, because it's so important to my district. Thank you. And yes, there's absolutely no denying that there's a crisis at the border and that the repercussions are hitting not just Texas, but basically our entire country. Um, so I wanted to ask you, though, we know that there's a need for a solution, um, but does Texas have the authority to do what HB4 would require? I believe it does, uh, Melissa, because under what everyone looks to as guidance for that is the Arizona case, Arizona versus United States. It was right. a 2012 Texas, I mean, U.S. Supreme Court case. And under that, uh, this law, House Bill 4, I don't believe is in conflict with that. Uh, what we're trying to do under House Bill 4 is completely different than what they were trying to do in what was their Senate Bill 1070 that they mm -hmm. passed in 2010. Uh, and we've stayed away from those things. Uh, uh, we've studied the opinion. We feel like we know what is in the opinion, what it says and what it doesn't say. And most importantly, we don't believe that what we're doing in House Bill 4 is preempted uh, by federal law. Uh, some that think so, I would encourage them to actually go back and read the opinion because I, I think it's very clear that we do have some latitude. States do have some latitude. Texas Absolutely. has some latitude. And so we're going to do that. The other thing is some of these defenses that are provided in, in both illegal entry and reentry our defenses under federal law uh, deal with DACA, deal with asylum, right. deal with uh, if the federal government has previously granted someone the right to be there. So all of those, and to say that it doesn't violate some other provision, 8 U.S.C. 1325 uh, of the fe of federal law that deals with illegal entry. So the the significant thing about House Bill 4 is this is nothing new. Uh, mm -hmm. These these laws for illegal entry is, is what we have in House Bill 4 is similar to and uh, to 8 United States Code 1325 for illegal entry. That That is the law now, has been the law in our country for decades, uh, for 71 years, as a matter of fact. Um, and then 8 U.S.C. 1326 is the same provision that we have for illegal reentry and also for removal uh, of persons that shouldn't be here, that get here illegally. Right. That, too, is under federal law, under 8 U.S.C. 1225. So we've tried to stick with what current law is to make sure that we're not pre preempted, uh, that we don't do something above and beyond that. And so I, to answer your question, I, I think, yes, it's completely constitutional. I think Texas has every right to secure our border and protect ourselves. No, absolutely. Texas has every right. So last question, we have every right, but why is it so important for Texas to act now instead of wait for the federal government to do yeah. its job? Well, we know that the Biden administration has had two and a half years to do what it needs to do, and they have failed and refused to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been some talk recently that, oh, now all of a sudden we've had an epiphany and we need to complete the border wall. Well, that sounds good, uh, and maybe we'll see some of that, but we can't, as Texans, we have to protect Texas, especially when the federal government will not do it. And uh, here, the the numbers are staggering. Uh, I mean, over the past in 2023, as far as encounters, we had 2.475 million. Uh, for the mm -hmm. month of September alone, it's approximately 270 thousand. That sets a right? record. Yeah. Further, CBP's reported that we've had for 2023 169 uh, 
known terrorist on the FBI terror watch list had been apprehended uh, crossing our border illegally. And so we also know, even from this past weekend, CBP puts out a report and says, uh, look, by the way, you need to be on the lookout for Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihadists. I'm not even sure who those folks are, mm-hmm. but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> and they're even warning us, hey, look out, these folks are coming. If we don't secure our border, we have no way to to uh, to apprehend these people and keep them from coming into our state and our country. So we cannot wait any longer. There's a lot of urgency for a bill like this. And thank you so much for your leadership in introducing this legislation. And thank you so much for being on the layout with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Representative Spiller. Thank you. Appreciate it. And to our audience, thank you for watching and listening. If you're interested in learning more about the crisis at the border, please go to texaspolicy.com. We've done a lot of research on the issue, and I'd also encourage you to take a look at House Bill 4. We'll see you next time.